back with a new video. Today, the whole concept of this video is to help you guys if you're in need of planning a wedding, maybe your wedding got postponed and you need to do some uh, arranging or maybe it's your first time getting married and are planning a wedding, right? It's something really big, something really scary. There's a lot of um, things that you have to go through and things you have to do in order to make that special day special, yes. right? Process and steps, yes. A lot of steps, a lot of process, but we are here to help you guys in any type of way that we can. Um, we built a few, a list of few steps that we took in order to make our magical day happen. Um, this video is basically budget friendly, so if you are uh, looking to save money, definitely give us a like, comment if you have any questions, and subscribe, okay guys? Yes, and definitely if you are planning a wedding within six months or less. Yeah, this is the video for you. Definitely something that we could help with because uh -huh. we planned our wedding in around that time. Yeah, we got married in 2018. Um, we got married within a four to five month span. So super quick, a lot of people usually take a year to year and a half um, to plan a wedding. So definitely uh, we're gonna show you the pros and cons to doing this. Okay guys, so the first step is Pick a date. So whenever you choose the day that you decide to get married, this will determine how much time you have, what your budget's gonna be uh -huh. like, and what you know vendors and what you know choices you can pick and take depending on the time, obviously, that you have exactly. to get married. Also, do not be determined on that date. You have to remember that a lot of these venues tend to have people that already chose that date, so your date might switch around. So don't get your hopes up if the date is not available within that short period of time. Yes. If you have longer time, within a year, maybe a year and a half, that date might most likely be available. Yeah, but if you're definitely planning a wedding, um, the short period of time, be flexible um, to the dates and yes. the specific date because um, for sure Saturday is usually taken up. Yeah. That's why we had a Sunday wedding. Yeah, but you can save money if you choose another day other than Saturday, okay? But we'll talk about that later on. Okay, and now we jump into step two, which is creating a budget. The most important step in this whole wedding planning is creating that budget. Sticking to that budget is insanely important, guys. One thing you do not want to do is getting to debt because you want to have this amazing wedding. We all want to have an amazing wedding. We all want to show off to our friends. We all want to make it memorable, but you also got to be very careful with all that money you're spending. Unless uh, someone is paying for it, if it's uh, the bride's parents, if it's your parents, if they're both paying for it, then obviously go all out and do whatever they can afford. But if you're coming out of pocket like I was, I had to plan a budget. Now, our budget that we kind of estimated towards was between 10,000 to 15,000, okay? That might seem like a lot, but in all honesty, for the wedding we had, it was actually pretty good. And we'll show you, we'll break it down, how much we spent for each of the, um, the, the venue and all these other things, we'll break it down to show you how much it really is. Because honestly, I thought that I could pull off a wedding with $7,000, but the way we were looking, it was not gonna happen, okay? So you definitely have to start doing your research and building up that budget with your fiance, okay? Once you create your budget, um, also be open to your resources. So um, for example, um, we had decided that we weren't going to use um, like other people to give us stuff. Um, this is really a big thing like in the Hispanic community where people, you have godparents, padrinos mm -hmm. and stuff, so that pay for certain things. Yeah, um, padrinos, for example, padrinos. Yeah, for like quinceañeras, they'll buy like the ring and the necklace or the cake, cake or, or stuff like that. Maybe. And we decided that we didn't want to go that way and like ask people, um, but we definitely were open to people who were willing to come to us and give us things. So mm -hmm. um, we decided that we didn't want to go that route. That's why we were being realistic, that 15000 was the max that we could yeah, afford between yeah. us two and not be you know in debt to pay this off for who knows how long. Yes. All right, and our next step, step number three, is mm -hmm. creating your guest the list. The guest list. Yes. Yes, that one can be a little challenging. Yes. So start with a good number of people that you want to invite. Okay. Ours was one seventy five to two hundred, but well, obviously that wasn't exactly what happened, right? We ended up seeing like up to two hundred and fifty people, right? Us Hispanics, us Mexicans, and Salvadorian. Um, we do tend to have a lot of family members, so mm -hmm. expect that. But also, don't invite everyone because the more people, the more money 
you have to spend in, um, in food and tables and all this extra stuff. So the least amount of people you invite, the better for your pocket. Yeah, or your, close, your family that's closer to you. Because yeah. in my case, like, I know people that know me, but I don't know them. So mm -hmm. I'm like, it's kind of hard to share the special day with people that you don't know. Yeah. Um, and at least from, in my case, my mom's like, no, you kind of like this person. Because, yeah. oh my God, since you were little, they've always like, you know, liked you. But I'm like, I don't know who they are. They haven't even been in my life. So like... Yeah, you know, this extra person wouldn't make a difference. Yeah, you don't have to invite just anyone. Invite the people that are closest to you, um, because they tend to invite other people themselves, and then so on and so forth. So just make sure that you stick with that number. Like I said, we we're looking for 175 to 200. A lot of the venues um, offer up to 300 people, but they usually stick with 250 max. Uh, for the venues here in uh, the DFW area. So when you're planning your wedding with one year ahead of time, um, you should definitely RSVP. Um, in our case, we yeah. didn't do that because our wedding was so fast within five, six months. So we weren't able to RSVP or know how many people were going to actually show up. That's why we were kind of between 175, 200. But if you do have time, um, make sure you do RSVP. That would help you a lot. It would help you save money on food, on chairs, on everything else. Um, I think it's really good to have a number of people that are assisting your wedding to yes. know how much to spend. Okay, so step number four is the wedding theme, okay? Choosing exactly how you want to picture your wedding to come together. And that will decide whether, whether which season you're getting married in, what colors you choose, what whole theme you want to do with the wedding and I'll let Justin talk about yes, that. Yes, definitely. So we knew already before we got engaged that we wanted a fall wedding. A fall, yeah. So that's why we were leaning towards September because that's our uh, anniversary when we started dating. Mm -hmm. um, but the dates weren't available obviously so we went with October and the colors I actually wanted were burgundy, burgundy. Yeah, navy, navy, blue. navy blue, greeneries, a little bit of gold, more of that wood feeling. Um, and I feel like having that theme already set and just knowing what it is that you wanted made it a lot easier. Yeah, definitely, because um, there's so much to choose from in the, in the yes. heat of the moment. Yes, and always know um, your theme ahead of time only because in, in my case too, um, I knew what kind of like flowers and stuff were available at that time. So I knew that I wasn't going to go looking for flowers that were in the spring that I knew weren't going to be, you know, out in the fall. Yeah. So definitely, um, yes, have a theme set, know what it is that you want, which I'm sure um, you girls out there already know exactly how you want your wedding. Um, and also putting your partner, um, also giving them opportunity to, you know, be able to express themselves in the wedding as well. And yeah. I'm just agreeing on everything. <laughs> yeah, and it's so important to choose the colors because it all came together. Like um, she was talking about the colors in our cake were the exact same colors with everything else that we were doing. Our suit, my suit was navy blue. I had uh, my mom, I, she had her dad wear navy blue. So everything just came together really well. You don't want to have, well this is opinion based, but you don't really want to have all different types of colors and everything going on. You want to make it flow nice and come together at the end when everything is said and done. So that is step number four, the wedding thing. So step number five is a wedding planner okay we did not have a wedding planner we just had a few friends helping us kind of go about it and we did uh, most of it but we a hundred percent recommend a wedding planner if it's in your budget if not just find a close friend to do it either for a small amount or maybe even free who knows right so um, we yeah we didn't get a wedding planner but we did have a friend that knew all about planning anything that you could you know possibly think about so we went and talked to her guess for her opinion what she thought um and everything but honestly if i could go back to that day i would definitely either hire someone or find someone that would help me just yes. get everything situated because the day of you're just going everywhere everywhere so if you have this person that keeps you kind of like on track and like hey did you do this don't forget this or hey did you call the vendors did you do this like someone just helping you keep up with it because it does become very stressful um because i mean if you think about it you have to do all of this within the course of yeah six months um or who knows but either way um yeah i definitely recommend getting someone to help you plan your wedding yeah the checklist is so big that there's so many things and so many vendors you got to call and so much stuff you got to do it really is overwhelming, so definitely hire a wedding planner if you can. So step number six, and one of the biggest steps you're going to take, and one of the most expensive as well, is the venue, okay guys? So the venue is going to be the one that's going to be up there and going to break the budget, depending how you want to have it. 
Um, if you saw one of our videos, one of our early videos where we're venue hunting for the wedding, we came across this beautiful venue. Jocelyn just loved it. It was this white mansion. Beautiful, I loved it. I just loved the whole setting and the whole feel of it. But it was $20,000, okay? And that included food and included a few other drinks and a few other things, but there was still so much more to it and you were already passing, we were already passing our $15,000 max budget. So it's very important to check out different venues, check out exactly what they offer and be like conscious of asking plenty of questions. Don't be afraid to ask questions because one of the biggest questions we have is if they allowed outside vendors in regards to food and drinks because the food was going to be gifted to us for free, okay? Yeah. Um, and the drinks, we were going to get them at a super cheap price. The venue did not offer that. They were actually pricing what? Uh, how much a plate? I think for kids, it was $18 a plate. Yeah. And then adults, it's like 25 27 yeah. yeah. So you're talking about $27 a plate for around 200 people and then kids eating $18 plates. And or it was just chicken nuggets and fries. Yeah, like and, then the, and then the drinks on top of that. I think the drinks and the food were hitting $7,000 or maybe $8,000 just in that. And we actually ended up spending, I think like 600 to 700 just in both drinks and, and, and food because the food was free. So that gives you an idea of how much you can save if you really look for different venues. Yes, and if you're planning a wedding with a short period of time again, um, and you don't know how many people, how many people are going to show up. You don't want to make extra food. You don't want to yes. pay for these extra plates uh -huh. and people not show that up. That is a big one. So yeah, definitely. One. And then kids do not need to eat eighteen dollar plates. They do not. Chicken strips with fries or <laughs> whatever it is. And honestly, like looking at the food, because I mean, obviously I didn't taste it, but looking at it, I'm like, I am not paying eighteen dollars for this. If it's not a freaking piece of steak with freaking high class food, and like, there's no point yeah. in paying this much for this. So I agree. definitely, and obviously Latinos, you know, like. I feel like we can find different, you know, meals, different or like food to feed people rather yeah. than what they were offering us to. Yeah, so we recommend looking for venues that out, allow outside catering because you can save definitely a lot, a lot more money if uh, you find catering outside as well as uh, bartenders and uh, uh, other uh, liquor vendors that allow for uh, bartending and drinks. So for the venue that we went to, they're called the Springs Event Venue, um, right? Yeah. Yeah, the Springs Events. Um, they're located all over Texas. They got venues everywhere, literally everywhere across Texas. Um, and the cool thing about them was that at the time, I don't know about now, we haven't checked, but at that time they were offering 50% discount if you're getting, if getting married four months and under. And I think it was 25% um, discount if it was six months or under. Mm -hmm. So we definitely got blessed. Jesus just came down and rained his light upon us. And we saved 50% off of the total. Um, like I said, it, it's all about saving money if you're really looking to save money. And we ended up paying $3,000, guys. $3,000, okay? For the venue, if you see our last video, um, you kind of see... A little bit of the venue and it's, it looks gorgeous it looks amazing right yeah definitely 50, for three thousand dollars yes i definitely agree compared yeah. to twenty thousand dollars that we went to go see mm -hmm. this was totally worth it so if you're planning a wedding within six or four months don't lose hope there's actually this was so worth it like it when i talk to my friends i'm like how much did you pay for your money oh ten thousand dollars but i planned it a year ahead i'm like yeah but you spent ten thousand dollars i only spent three thousand dollars and i got yeah. my wedding in four months and we have the same location or like the same like you know same company, company. Yeah, yeah. so it's kind of like a shocking but yeah definitely like look into that and whenever you go and see um venues like don't settle i promise because i was yeah. saying when i saw the other one i was like but i want this one so bad but then when i went to this one and i saw it i fell in love with it and then i fell in love with the price and i was like okay this is the one yeah so. and the cool thing was that um they provided the chairs they provided the tables and they provided the security um it came included with it we just had to choose who we wanted uh, to have a security, but everything was so smooth with them. We loved the whole process. They were very upfront about the pricing. There was no hidden fees, nothing like that. Um, and the reason they, uh, like I said, we don't know if they're still doing it, but the reason they do it so cheap is because they want to fill those days up. And we actually got married on a Sunday, which made it even cheaper. Um, like we mentioned previously, Saturdays are usually the most expensive day. 
So when it's four months notice, they wanna fill all those days up that haven't filled up yet to make obviously more profit. But it helps the people that are getting married in the end. Yep, especially people yeah. right now, I'm guessing that with the whole quarantine and everything going on right now, um, people's weddings got are being postponed, postponed yeah. and stuff. But you also have to remember there's people that you could want your wedding here in June, July, but someone already has that date. So you're gonna have to kind of like figure it out. I think this is like a good, um, yeah, to rearrange everything. Rearrange everything. I think it's a good way to yeah. go about it. Definitely. Yeah, so like we said, um, if your wedding day got postponed or anything like that, and maybe you can step, take a step back and uh, reanalyze everything that you are spending, maybe this can help you out and come in here. So whenever you do go and you see a venue and you really like it, um, you definitely have to go prepared because they do require a deposit. Oh, yes. So that was our thing too because I'm like, okay, there's only two days left in this month that we can get married. I think it was only two in October and yeah. then in December. So there was like one that. all the way in December and we knew with the Texas weather, we did not want our guests to be outside in the cold and it was perfect weather guys i'm talking about like 65 to 70 Beautiful. degree weather the whole week it rained and then sunday it was just perfect it's amazing <laughs> yes so definitely be prepared like if you're gonna mm -hmm. go look for venues and back to the same thing and you have a short period of time to plan this wedding be ready with your deposit they do payment plans at least for the one that we went with they yeah, do they payment do plans payment they plans. will help you um so definitely definitely lock in those dates and remember you can't keep planning a wedding if you don't have a venue okay yeah. because you really need the venue because where else are you gonna have this? Okay, guys, yeah, so sticking with step number six uh, with the whole venue, we're gonna talk about all the vendors, how much money we spent on, on this. Um, like we mentioned, the food was free, which was amazing. Um, I'm so lucky to have uh, people in my family that are in the food industry and they were able to provide um, all of the food. We're talking about all of it. We had fajitas, we had beans and rice, uh, the chips, the yes. salsa. The queso, all of that was provided by them and served by them as well. So huge help in that um, part, okay? So the food was free. Now we jumped to the drinks. They gave it to us at a really good discount. It was uh, two margarita machines that were able to literally, what, serve up to like 200 people and people got like twice, yeah, seconds and thirds and fourths or whatever. Um, that was $500 plus, um, I think there was like around 30 uh, champagne bottles as well for the toast. Yes, and also remember like as far as the food, um, try to just be open-minded to what yeah. you feed more people. So we were leaning towards more like Tex-Mex, Mexican food, or maybe like pasta because we know pasta can go a long way. If we feed yeah, it's people. cheap to make. And yeah. yeah, so that, or you can also be open to, we met this guy, he got a food truck, oh, yeah. in-and-out food truck. An in-and-out food truck. People just pulled up. So like. I mean, it just depends on you. Like, I did want like a whole bougie wedding, but then when it came down to it, I'm just grateful that we went that route. So yeah, so that was the food and the drinks. We spent $500 on the drinks, okay? So now jumping into the DJ. The DJ, we found him uh, through a friend of Jocelyn's. Awesome guy, you know, he came in very professionally. Um, he ended up charging us $700, but I just love the professionalism that he brought to the table. He basically gave us a sheet, a spreadsheet of how he's going to do everything on schedule, on time. He was working from the ceremony to the reception and to the rest of the night. Um, and he had everything down to the T. He had the songs that we came in for, for our um, ceremony. He had our song that we danced together, our mom and our dad's song that she danced with her dad had everything down to the T so he just made it very smooth and um, easy where yeah. we like it's not like something they have to worry about like he's yeah like, oh he got it down and he's just, like you said very professional the first day we met him he was like straightforward like this this is what I do and we were too we were like this is a Christian wedding like this is the kind of music that I want this is the kind of music I don't want and then we filled out this form of all the songs that we wanted when we wanted them and he was just really like on top of it so yeah I'll leave we'll leave his, his information yeah. in the description below obviously his prices I'm sure have changed because I'm sure he's grown more in these past two years yeah. obviously um so i'm sure it'll be different depending on how long you want them there what day you want them there and everything yeah. um, but i definitely recommend him 10 out of 10 for sure good guy also on the venue um make sure like we were talking about asking questions a lot of the venues charge for the longer period of time that you're there the amazing venue that we had uh gave us like around 19 hours i believe and i could be wrong on that but it was a long period of time that we could show up and end the wedding you know because there's a lot of venues that will give you seven hours 
from the time you get there, everything has to be set up. The, the bride and the, the bridesmaids have to be, all be ready. It's very rushed. So make sure you also check out the venues that give you that large amount of time for a little bit uh, smaller price. And this goes back to the wedding planner because yeah. in our case, like you're basically having to put this whole wedding together in one day. You have those 18 hours to literally start yeah. the wedding, get it together, get the you know, be at the wedding yeah. and then still in the wedding and clean and up. Yep. So, and clean up and leave. Yes. So, so definitely like if you have someone that will like you go and get ready, you don't have to worry about anything going yeah. on outside, that is amazing. That's why get a wedding planner or someone to help yeah. you, a friend or someone that's gonna just get it all figured out that knows how you are, knows yeah. what kind of decisions you would make. Um, because yes, the whole day goes by super super fast. Okay, so now jumping into the decorations, um Basically, the decorations, we had a friend do it for us. Um, it still came out of pocket. We ended up paying $600 for the decorations, but we did learn a lot from the decorations. You can save a ton of money if you DIY it yourself. Yes, for sure. Yeah. So, I mean, there's a whole bunch of videos now on YouTube, TikTok, everywhere you go, you can see that there's DIYs to make them. And I know sometimes, like for me, I'm like, no, like I want this extravagant thing and everything, but in reality i'm like no you can make it very yeah minimal. like i can make it very it minimal. looks perfect and it wasn't like something that i was really looking for it was more of like the venue itself spoke a lot it was a very beautiful venue that didn't require a lot of things to it yeah so um definitely look look into either creating them yourself or um just i guess something going the cheaper route i would say unless it's like a big deal for you then definitely you know invest your money in that but for me yeah. personally and for us it really wasn't something that we were like, oh, we need these amazing decorations. But definitely, like minimal sometimes is a lot and it looks really nice. Now jumping into the florist. This is another one of those big budget things. Um, florists do not tend to be cheap at all. They tend to be very expensive. Um, the florist that we went to, she had a minimum of $1,000. So we just came up to her and told her straight up, like this is what we're looking for and this is how much we're looking to spend. And she told us, the least I can do is a thousand dollars and we managed our budget and she was amazing um, at it as well. We ended up spending twelve hundred dollars because with a few more things, mm -hmm. um, the groomsman and the, the husband, the, the groom, uh, <laughs> he, we had the little flower thing. I forget the name of it. It's on the suit. Mm -hmm. Jocelyn's bouquet as well. That was expensive, mm -hmm. but it was very beautiful. And she also had another bouquet, right? The one that you throw whenever yeah whenever it's the the, the top of, yeah. of the bouquet um, so she had an extra one as well and little things here and there it pushed us to twelve hundred dollars which is still super cheap yeah it we really is up, we ended up going to another florist yeah. that was charging us to three thousand yes. dollars so definitely like before you commit to one person or one vendor Look around. do your research go yes. around um, and actually this lady with the thousand dollars um she was very, you can tell she was very experienced because I told her, we only want to spend a thousand dollars if that's the limit that you have, but I want, I need all of these things done with thousand yes. dollars. And she's like, okay, I can make that happen. Obviously, like my sister's bouquets, they weren't like big ones, they were like smaller ones, but that's like, well, she could, she could still give me two bouquets without charging me more, you know? Yeah. And then the crowns and just stuff, it obviously became more minimal, um, but I still stayed in that, try to stay in that budget that we realistically had made. Yeah. So now we talk about the production, another big expense, okay? Um, we ended up going with a production, a professional production team located in uh, here in Dallas. Um, they were the cheapest that I could find for what they were offering. Um, they offered an hour of video with I believe like 30 or 40 pictures, um, I think like 10 or 15 edited, mm -hmm. and then a highlight clip of the entire uh, video. Um, they ended up costing us $3,000, like I said, the cheapest that we could uh, find, two photographers and one videographer. Now, I believe they did an amazing job, like they did a really good job, the photographers were awesome, but I feel for us millennials and just the style that is nowadays on Instagram and the wedding styles, I feel we could have gone with more of a freelancer route. We could have hired um, two photographers, probably a lot cheaper and a videographer as well cheaper and then they could have probably gave us what we were looking for. So definitely keep your options open out for anyone that does photography on Instagram that lives in your area or videography and look at their prices as well. Um, don't always go for the big companies because they do tend to charge more and they're usually not up to date as 
the Instagram photographers and you know just be open up about it so next is the tablecloths which um, obviously you're gonna need them for all your tables yeah. um, that you're gonna put you're not gonna have naked tables um, so definitely definitely especially if you um, are here in the Dallas area and you know about the bazaars which are like Harry Heights bazaars Plaza Latina all those bazaars yeah. go out there do some research as the ladies that do manteles you know fabric all that the fix dresses they will hook you up, okay? Because I looked at this um, company that was like, I don't even know why I did that, but I looked up to rent some cloths and it was extremely expensive. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, but just go to the bazaar, even if it's the Harry Hanks Bazaar, but go to all those ladies and start asking them how much they charge for a certain amount of tablecloths and you know what they require or whatever. Yeah. So we went to all these ladies and I found a lady and she happened to have, have them and she was just so minimal. She didn't require a lot. She was just... Like, I just made a down up, payment man. of $20 yeah. and then, um, yeah, she's like, just come pick them up and then don't wash them, just bring them like that and just make sure that they're all in there. Yeah. And then I guess that was the deposit, like the $20 and then I think we paid $3 just for her to give us some of the and obviously she knows what she's doing so they were nice, they were just as nice as the other ones that we were going to pay more money for. Yeah, they were like ivory, they, were, they came in really nice. Yeah, they were really nice and, and obviously it went back to the same thing that we, yeah. we were very simple. Um, and now we're going to the cake, okay? Now the wedding cake was gifted to us by uh, one of Jocelyn's friend, and she's my friend too because she's cool, <laughs> uh, Nieves, she gifted us the cake so shout out to her, um, but that cake was expensive. Yeah, it really was, but I mean, the experience was such a nice yeah, experience we went that cake I was testing. like, yeah, I was like, that's awesome because that was not the route I was taking, like if you want me to be honest with you guys, I had already talked to my sister, we were going to go to Sam's, we are going to get three, like three, you know, tower cake, and then we were going to just ask for white, and that's it, and then I was going to ask my florist to add flowers to it and make it real simple, but cute, and I was only going to spend like $80, okay? $80, Wait, yeah, here you go. <laughs> but it was gifted to us, and I really took that as a blessing, and like, mm -hmm. I really, um, enjoyed the experience, the experience, but our friendship, like, I feel like it was a way, like, um, that she showed her, her, her friendship to me, like that she loved me and like yeah. loved us, and like it was by just giving, beautiful. By, uh, throwing that money, <laughs> but like it was really nice. No, yeah. and the whole process was dope too. Um, you go uh, cake testing. Um, it was in Grand Prairie, I think it was called the Cake Guys, and it was cool that you choose exactly how you want to build the cake, what flavors, how high, etc. Um, and it came out to close to a thousand dollars, or if not a thousand. Um, so that's a thousand dollar cake. Obviously, like I said, it's free, but you can uh, definitely budget it. Step number seven is book your efficient. So that's the person that is going to marry you guys, yep. right? So in my case, I am a pastor's daughter and I did She's not. got pastor connections. Okay. <laughs> well, I do, but I did not want my dad to marry us. I was like, no, I'm your first daughter that's getting married, you know, and I want you to experience this and I don't want you to have to lead a wedding, especially not your daughter's wedding. Yeah. So um, we have a pastor friend and he, his name is Dr. Maris, he was amazing. Um, he's the one that married us. Yeah. Um, so definitely make sure you book him with time because if, you know, if he's a pastor, a priest, whatever you Probably want to do. They're Stuff probably booked, like they have things yeah. going on, and in, my, in our case, it was on a Sunday, so it's even harder because they have church, Service, their services, yeah. you know, and everything, but he made was time. amazing. He made time for us, and he came, married us, and he was super cool, awesome. Super cool pastor, you know, it was and really down Same to thing, like, he understood us, how we wanted this way to go, and how we wanted to just honor God. And he did it, did it bilingual. Yeah, he did it bilingual, and like, yeah. everything that we did, but always had a significant, like, Significant? Yeah, significance to it. Yeah, to it and like the way he explained it was just so perfect. So yeah, yeah definitely book um, or book them on time, find someone that's gonna marry you, make sure they can make it there, see how much they charge, is it in your budget? If you can find someone yeah. that can do it for free, if your pastor can do it for you, definitely just look into that because that's very important. He actually did it for free, but we ended up giving him some money. Um yeah, like an offering yeah, to an say offering. thank you. We wanted to say thank for you. his time yeah. and for coming. Um, but that ranges depending on who you want uh, to get married, but we'll throw that in there. I think we give them $300. I don't how much it was. We'll just put $300 for that. The wedding dress, the suit, and then the bride, the bridesmaids and the groom's uh, attire as well. Now the wedding dress, that was as well gifted to us, gifted to her, because <laughs> she was trying to go the bougie route. How much was the dress? I think it was a little bit over $1,000. Okay, so not that expensive, 
but it's still up yeah. there, right? It's still a thousand plus dollar yeah, dress. Yeah, so when I talked to him and I asked, like, how much do you think is a reasonable price for me to spend on a wedding dress? I think he told me like $300 and I was like, Ugh. okay, that's fine. Like, I was willing to just, okay, that's yeah. fine, $300, fine. Like, I'll find something. But then my dad told me like, hey, I want to give you your wedding dress because obviously he's not going to pay for the whole wedding. So he was like, I want to give you your wedding dress. And you know, that changed real quick. I was like, okay. So then I started looking for a dress and obviously, I chose the one I really wanted. So yeah. it was a um, now my suit, I got it at a company that I actually saw off uh, Instagram and off YouTube videos. People were reviewing it. It's called Indochino. They do personalized and uh, custom suits. Um, they obviously do all the tailoring. They take care of all of that. Um, the suit ended up costing me like around four hundred eighty dollars. It's only for the two piece. It was for the 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 top piece, the the blazer, and then for the pants. Um, it can, that is a little expensive, but I, they can also range up to a thousand dollar suits, but you can definitely, definitely save a lot of money by just going anywhere else like H&M or getting it Taylor Fair at a, maybe at a, a least expensive place. You can get it uh, Taylor Fair for like $200, $300. Also, you can go the tuxedo route. You can rent tuxedos for, um, for yourself or for your groomsmen. But I wanted the suit just because I wanted to keep it as a memory, like she's talking about or keeping her wedding dress and I can wear it as well. Um, for like another 150 bucks, I get this tailor fit suit that I can take home and wear yes, and on other occasions. Nice. You know, you can go that route as yeah, well. Yeah, it fits him very nice too. They made it just for his body, for you know, for yeah. him. And then I think he customized it inside. You can customize every detail, yeah. the buttons, everything you can customize it. And like I said, well, the customer service was amazing. Yeah, inside he imprinted, um, I think it was our wedding day and then and our initials. Names, our initials and yeah, the, so yeah, it's, day. it's nice. Okay, so step nine, um, registry. So um, whenever you are planning your wedding, um, you need to start a register, registry, I guess it's called. Um, and I would suggest just doing two locations. Um, for example, like Target and then doing, um, I don't know, somewhere else, Bath body and beyond whatever the place is called bed, bed bath and beyond, bed, bath and beyond. <laughs> okay something like that i don't that. even know if those stores are opening yeah well, so i think they are, I think they are yeah so um yeah make a registry and just pick out things that you like only yeah. because you don't want people just to give you things that you're not going to need um in our case i put specifically um on our invitations that we want to gift cards and cash yeah but remember you're still going to receive gifts and that's that happened to us so you do get a lot of gifts so Either you do the registry or you can also ask for cash. So in our case, we did the cash. We didn't do the registry because we didn't have the time for it. Um, but if you do have the time for it, definitely go and pick out because it makes it easier as, you know, when people get invited to wedding, you just go and pick out what you want to pick out and you just yeah. pick it out and you know they're going to like it because they chose it. Um, so yeah, definitely do that. If not, just put cash only or something. People will give you the Okay, now jumping into the wedding bands. I know we didn't mention the engagement rings or anything like that because that's very subjective to what you want to do. Um, obviously keep in mind that you want to give her exactly what she wants um, and the rings can vary you can buy a $500 uh, engagement ring or wedding band as well as a $5,000 one after he proposed we actually went together yeah we, we went together ourselves. to uh, Robin's brothers right yeah and I feel like in that case we were more open to talking about it so like what do you think like what where should we stay like yeah. you know that kind of stuff um obviously that like engagement ring is supposed to be a surprise so you don't want to know how much it costs you don't want to know you know that, that stuff doesn't matter it's just like the moment and you be engaged yeah. but once you do um go and pick your bands i definitely think that i mean you could definitely talk about budget if you want yeah. to um but if you don't then i mean you don't have to but yeah but i'm um, not talking about the engagement ring but talking about our wedding bands Mine was six hundred dollars for a, I believe it was a fourteen carat, fourteen or eighteen. I'm not really sure. Um, just a, a gold band. You can see I don't wear it a lot because I'm not going anywhere. <laughs> Quarantine. No, but in all honesty, just get something that you can afford and something that you do like. I think hers was around twelve hundred. Obviously, more bougie and expensive. Always breaking the bank over here. But like I said, it's very subjective to what you want to do. I don't want to get into too many details because that is more of personalized yeah. Yeah, preference. Yeah, it's like your preference. Yeah. yeah. So as far as the, of the bride, uh, make sure that you book your makeup and hair um, ahead of time as well. So you know the day already. You know you need hair and makeup done. Make sure you book that as soon as possible because they are booked all the time as well. Yeah. So make sure you find someone that can do it for you, that you like, you know, their style, how they do makeup. I'm sure they do like tries, trials or whatever that's called before just make sure that you like it. 
My makeup, I think they charged me like $60. Okay, And okay. then my hair, I think it was like another $60 or something like that. Um, but definitely booked them with time. I wanted mine very simple. I had my hair down, curled, and I didn't want anything crazy updo. I could have done my own makeup. I now think about it and I was like, okay, I could have done what she did on myself because I feel like I can do my makeup that good at least. Mm -hmm. um, but the experience was nice just sitting there and laying, letting someone just, you know, doll you up and make you look really nice. So make sure that you do that. Um, ahead of time as well. So one thing that is very, very, very important is to get your marriage license ahead of time. Okay? Yeah. So um, in our case, we took premarital classes before we got married, so we had like a discount to be able to do that. Um, but make sure you go with time, get your license, so that if you are going to get married right then and there, make sure you're ready and you have your paperwork so that you can get that signed. Um, mm -hmm. and you can do that there. If you're not taking that option. Um, it's up to you how you want to do it. If you want to do it before or after the wedding, I think that's kind of a personal thing. But make sure you have your marriage license so that you are officially married, okay, and not just married by the church. Yeah. Um, obviously, it's important for us to be married by the church and stuff like that. But um, the marriage license is definitely important as well because I actually want to be married, married, you know. So and it takes a while too. So make sure you do that and you get you know your papers in and you get married and all that good stuff. After the marriage license, I think the marriage license was I think we paid like twenty five dollars or thirty dollars because, because like I told you guys we had that discount because we yeah. took the premarital classes. But I think that's how much they cost, like forty dollars or something like that. It's what they cost yeah. to get that marriage license. So definitely awesome. get that out of the way. One last thing, this is very as well, if your preference, whatever you want to do with this, but is the honeymoon. It's something that will be worked on through the whole planning because you have to have some, you have to get your plane tickets, you have to get your location, the hotels, you have to get everything for whenever you um, are done with the wedding. You either go a week after or the same night, whatever it may be, is the honeymoon, right? So make sure you as well, that's the whole reason to plan a budget friendly wedding so you have money to be able to go uh, to your honeymoon. You don't have to go anywhere crazy, you don't have to go across the world, you can go in your same city. I know a lot of people that do that to go to, the, to in your same city or maybe just out of state, close to out of state. Um, but I would recommend a honeymoon just because it is a special time right after you get married to enjoy each other. To also um, just have a good time and definitely make that extra room in the budget for the honeymoon. I think in all in all, it came out to two thousand dollars out of our pocket for five days. So that was that. Like I said, you don't have to go to a honeymoon at all, or you can budget the 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 wedding into a super small budget and then splurge on the honeymoon that's also an option yeah it's your preference on everything this whole wedding is gonna be like to us our honeymoon is like we want to go all out we want to do this to you the food might be everything for you and you want to just spend five thousand dollars on that it's like your that's yeah. your own preference obviously um but this is what we decided to go with because we felt like this was just um, now that we did it this way is now that we've been there we feel like that's the best steps to take to save money and yeah. obviously back to you having a wedding in such a short time yeah. So um, definitely, if you want to go to Hawaii, check up, check our videos mm -hmm. on Hawaii. There's a lot of different stuff going on in Hawaii, um, but it was a very fun vacation and a very awesome honeymoon that we had. It was a good yeah. experience. I mean, a lot of people are like, it's just paper, but something about being married it does change because I don't know. Like once we went, like we're married, I still couldn't believe. Yeah. Oh my God, I'm married. Like this isn't just like he's coming home. We're coming home together now. It's not like I'm going home. He's going home. It's yeah. Like, something it's a different obviously but yeah yeah definitely take a honeymoon i would suggest a honeymoon even if it's from dallas to austin it doesn't matter yeah, just being away from everyone and just away. you too yeah taking some time off to enjoy each other like we mentioned and just have an all-around amazing time yeah okay, like two so. months later you might just come back with a baby <laughs> <laughs> okay guys so we got the total price of our wedding and we're actually surprised because this is the first time we actually look at but everything that we were doing to the exact T. Now remember, a few of these things might be rounded up, okay? Just because we want to make sure that we're giving you guys correct information. But all in all, for our wedding, with everything we mentioned, we came up to $10,855. So that was perfectly at our budget of $10,000 to $15,000. As well as if we include the wedding bands and the honeymoon, which the wedding bands were $2,000, and the honeymoon was another $2,000, it brings up our total budget to fourteen thousand eight hundred and fifty-five. So right under that fifteen thousand dollar max budget line, 
that we were trying to stay under. But that's also including the honeymoon and the wedding bands, you know? And then remember, this might vary. Your wedding bands don't have to be that expensive. You can and you don't go. have to take the honeymoon if you yeah, don't want to. Yeah, you don't have to. You can go, like I said, somewhere close and spend, I don't know, $500. So. Yeah, but definitely we saved a lot, like we mentioned as well. We got a cake gifted to us. She got her dress gifted to her. And we also got the food gifted to us. Plus, we got half percent on the wedding. Um, so if we put all of that together, we saved seven thousand two hundred dollars. Okay, with all the savings that we had. So imagine that. Okay, with our ten thousand dollars plus the seven thousand, we're looking. We were over our uh, our, budget. our budget. But you know, thanks to God and thanks to all our family members and all our friends that were able to uh, come in clutch for us, we saved uh four thousand two hundred dollars from them and then the three thousand dollars from the venue so super super happy yeah, about that yeah that's awesome that's a, definitely a blessing yeah yeah so sure. you can definitely make the wedding of your dreams while still staying in that budget friendly line if you want to have a super small wedding you have all the right to do that mm -hmm. or if you want to have an amazing wedding you have all the right to do that but just don't go in debt trying to do this, okay? Yeah, I definitely recommend that. You don't want to go into marriage already. Already in debt, yeah. So, yeah, definitely for sure, you can definitely have your wedding of your dreams. I would say I have the wedding of my dreams because I've yeah. always been very realistic. Mm -hmm. And then back to the same thing, like I feel like you guys, if you yeah. know you're going to get married, talk about it. You don't have to be engaged to talk about it. Talk about it today and be like, hey, have you ever thought like when we get married, like mm -hmm. how much do you want to spend? Like. We talked about it all the time. I talked about it like every single day. Yeah, and that was kind of the goal we were trying to stick around the whole time. Because I, looking around, I knew that 7,000 budget I had, that was out the window, you know? Just with what we wanted to have. Because it wasn't just her, it was myself as well. I wanted to have that type of wedding as well. Because it's one day you are going to remember. Yeah, yep. And it's forever. So, yeah, definitely. As long as you guys agree, um, definitely go with whatever budget is best for you. Yeah. If you can do 30000 that's amazing. Or if um, you can only do $1,000 sure. and $1, just have a, a cook at home. Whatever it may be, guys, don't be ashamed to have a small wedding. Mm -hmm. Do whatever is in your budget. And maybe you can blow out and have an amazing honeymoon. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, definitely. And yeah. I'm actually really grateful we were able to do both. Like, I think I love my wedding and I love that we, could have, we went to Hawaii. So... Definitely, you guys, you can do it. And like I said, you know, earlier, if you want any tips, you have any questions, if you're, yeah. you know, here in the area, definitely comment leave a comment below. below. We'll try to help you guys as much as we can and yeah. just give you more feedback, I guess, in detail. Um, it's kind of hard through YouTube because it makes the video, like, super long. But, yeah, if you have any questions, definitely reach out to us um, and we'll be happy to help you guys. Also, follow us on Instagram. Uh, stay connected to us, guys. And if you want to see any more of these videos, any more marriage videos, we're now professionals at marriage. We're, we're hitting that year and a half to year and seven months of being married. But we can also give you guys a few tips on what we've experienced in this uh, year and a half mark. Okay? Especially with a baby as well. So, <laughs> so thanks for watching again, guys. We hope everybody's staying safe and staying healthy. And uh, God bless you guys. And we'll see you guys later. Okay? Okay.